everybody, Kenneth Russell here. Hope you're doing great. Today I'm gonna to do a video talking about how I built this screen here. This is a 120 inch screen from corner to corner and I made it out of spandex. It's a pretty cool design, pretty cool idea. Essentially what I'm wanting to do in this room is have a acoustically transparent screen with all my speakers behind the screen. Right now, I've got these like big tower speakers right here that are as tall as I am that are hidden behind the screen right now. I've got these two subs. I'm building a center channel that's gonna go here. The deal with if you're ever doing a screen that is gonna have speakers behind it, obviously that screen is gonna get in the way of the sound. So I had to build this acoustically transparent screen. I'm super cheap. So I didn't want to spend a thousand bucks on a nice acoustically transparent screen. So I searched the forums on AVS forums and came across this idea for a train, uh, spandex screen. And I'll show you some footage here in a second of me building it. I actually took about two and a half hours of footage of me building the screen. And uh, I'm going to do a lot of time lapse and that kind of thing just to show you how to put one of these together. And a shout out to, by the way, to a YouTuber uh, who has a channel called Family White TV has a great series on home theater for the masses. And I watched his video on how to build this screen and it was very helpful. So I want to do a shout out to him. I don't know him or anything, but uh, he's got a great channel. So if you're into home theater stuff, check him out, Family White TV. Anyway, this screen right here is spandex, two layers of spandex. It's got a layer of black spandex stretched and then a layer of white spandex stretched. What that does, it kind of creates a gray scale uh, screen. You know, you don't want just pure white screen, especially if you're doing like a one gun LCD or DLP projector. If you have a CRT projector, it's a little bit different. You can get by with pure white. Then also on this, I put this felt up top here, and this is just what I got on Amazon, and it's four inch felt that uh, basically allows me to kind of overscan the image just a little bit. And, and so the image goes up slightly over this and then I get a perfectly, you know, rectangle image. I'm not seeing any, any of the screen on the top or the sides or the bottom. Also, this screen is a, let's see, a 235 to 1, 2.35 to 1 ratio screen, which is what most movies are coming out as right now on Blu-ray and wherever you're streaming them. Even on Netflix and stuff, it's it's for this size screen where it's wider. It gives you a little bit more of that cinema look rather than the 16 by nine TV size. So as we all know, like when you're watching a TV and it's got the, the wider aspect ratio, it just puts a black bar on the top and a black bar on the bottom. Well, I don't like that. I wanna be able to see the whole screen. So what I've done is uh, made the screen that ratio of 1.35 to one and then I've got that full screen. And so basically what I do with the projector is those black bars, I just zoom it out and the black bars are still projecting. They're just projecting up here and they're projecting down here. And this uh, black velvet helps where you don't see the gray from, because you know, you can't project black. So it's projecting a dark gray, but this black velvet helps to, to kind of crush those blacks to make them look black. And they're really not that noticeable when it's a 16 by nine image. I basically just zoom it back in to fit in the top and the bottom, and then I'll have a little bit of gray on the sides. I'd rather deal with the gray on the sides than having to deal with the bars on the top. Uh, the reason is because if you're doing, if you're watching like a 16 by nine uh, aspect ratio, chances are it's probably like a TV show or something like that. And I can deal with that image being smaller. I'd rather have my TV shows look smaller and my epic cinematic movies look bigger, if that makes sense. Uh, eventually, I'm going to figure out a way to take some, some extra of the black uh, acoustically transparent spandex and like create some borders with like a, like a picture frame basically and just attach it to the sides to cover up the gray bars on the sides whenever I'm watching a 16 by nine, but I haven't done that yet. I think total and, and, and everything, the spandex probably cost me and cost was about $70, I think with shipping for both layers of uh, spandex. This velvet stuff was I think $35 or $40, something like that on Amazon. 
and then the wood and different, you know, miscellaneous screws and materials. I think I probably had about $30 in that. So this is about 130, I'm going to say 130 to $150 screen that I built myself, but it is comparable to a high end screen in my opinion. And I couldn't be happier. Anyway, here it is. So what I use to attach my one by fours together is the Craig jib. And this thing is kind of an interesting little, uh, gadget it just kind of connects on the end of the board and gives you a perfect uh, joint here I'll show you in a second so here I'm doing is measuring out uh, the lengths of all my boards and I'm going to cut them and I did everything I pre decided on everything I knew exactly how big I wanted the screen I knew exactly how long I wanted the boards and basically what I did was I took my uh, 120 inch screen that I wanted to build so I wanted the actual screen area to be 120 inches and I went on to tar, oh, I'm sorry, I went on to projectorcentral.com and put in my projector and the ratio that I wanted and put it in 120 inches. Basically tells you exactly what dimensions you need. And then I added four inches to that. So, you know, my, my screen, let's say, I don't remember what it was exactly, but let's say it was 110 inches long, like from left to right. That's what I wanted. Well, then I'm going to have to add four inches to each side or for the for the wood. And so basically my black borders are going to go on the wood. Here's a close up of the, the, the Craig jib. And basically it has this little set screw that you put on there that will determine how deep it drills into it. And then this is just a test piece of wood that I was trying it out for the first time. This little gadget here is, uh, it's made by the same company, but it ended up not really working. It's like a clamp, it's supposed to, to clamp perfectly, but it didn't really do it. Um, anyway, I took it back. So I used it for like half this project and, <laughs> and took it back. But you can see here what the, it's creating a pocket hole uh, screw for the, uh, for you to screw in and butt up the joints next to each other and it creates a really good joint. So what I'm doing here is I'm just measuring on the one by fours exactly where I want to put in the, the Craig jib. So here you can see I'm still using that thing. I'm clamping down and it's just simply just screwing it in there. This is, this Craig jib is like the, I think it was 20 bucks or 30 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they have one that's like a hundred bucks that is a lot better and it clamps down, but this, this will get you by without a problem at all. So I'm just kind of screwing all these. Um, and you can see here's a close up of me doing it. Um, in real time and basically what it's doing is it's drilling in the set screw thing uh, that collar lets it not drill too far and then when I take this off you'll see it's got um, it, it that it's perfect there here's a little layout of the way that I kind of put once I got all the pieces screwed I'm gonna lay them out on the ground and just start putting them together these are the actual screws that made by the same company, those Craig screws. Uh, they do require those square bit at the end of it, um, but it they work really well. So here you can see, I'm gonna kind of show you, screwed in a little bit, I butted it up against there. Um, supposedly that other clamp thing that I got was able to clamp these two together and hold them in place, but since I took it back, I just did it the old way. I've got a board on the bottom that I'm pushing down up against so that this connection this joint is flush um, I didn't want anything any wobbles or anything like that and on the this first one I used the square to, to just make sure I have a square but then I think after maybe my I don't think I did it much after that uh, it was it was pretty square or it was actually perfectly square these are some clamps I don't know if you guys have these everywhere in the country or the world but here in Texas they have them uh, they're a uh, type of hurricane tie type thing and I just decided to use these um, got them at Home Depot I think they're like 50 cents a piece or 75 cents a piece but just to basically make sure that that joint is never going to come loose so I did that to all four corners and then I'm going to start working on these middle braces here and I actually made a mistake when I was <laughs> measuring for this I don't know why but I, I just uh, I measured into quarters instead of thirds and basically left a bigger opening in the middle than I originally had, had anticipated, but um, it ended up working out. What I'm doing here is I'm putting that triangle, that orange triangle underneath a little bit, 
because I wanted these center joints or these center, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, the supports to be away from the screen a little bit. I didn't want them to be flush up against the screen because I didn't know if when I stretched the spandex, if that would somehow push up against the support and then you'd have like a line in the middle of the screen. So I wanted that, even though it's a, like, I think that's a quarter inch is what that, uh, that triangle was. Um, that's enough that where when it's stretched, it's not going to push up against there. So I did that on all four of the supports here. I put two supports, but four, four connections. You can kind of see it a little bit, how there's like a little bit of a lip right there on the right side. Um, and this one spot here, I actually didn't drill the pilot hole the way I should have, and it split out the wood. Um, not a huge deal as I'm going to be covering everything with felt, and it's not part of the screen area in any way. So I just kind of drilled another pilot hole and then put in a screw to kind of suck that back in. But with any project, there's always going to be little mistakes, and you know, it's no big deal. You just got to work around them. So I'm putting the uh, putting it back together and putting that that clamp there. I forget what it's called. It's, in, it's along with the hurricane ties. So that is the frame right there done. Now I'm going to use my staple gun and just go through and staple all the spandex on there. It's not rocket science. This is what the spandex looks like from Spandex World, which was really funny when I. <laughs> When I got that package in, my wife was like, what the heck did you order from spandexworld.com? And uh, <laughs> so I had to explain to her, it's, it's actually just part of my screen. So here I'm just uh, putting some kind of temporary, not necessarily temporarily, but just, I'm not, I didn't go all the way across on the top there. I just put maybe four or five staples across the top and then I flipped it over and then I'm gonna put all the staples across that side of things. And so it's honestly, this is really easy. It's not hard. I was expecting it to be harder than it really was. Um, it wasn't very hard. You just, you just stretch it and you staple it and you start working one side to the next. Um, I read on one of the forums, somebody put in staples every two inches. And so that's what I did. Um, you may not even have to put that many in honestly. Uh, but the corners are probably the hardest part. You just got to kind of figure a way to to fold them over and you know mine aren't even super super neat i just kind of uh you know it's not wrapped like a package i just kind of crumpled up the edge and, and stapled it down and it, it ended up working really well um and i wanted to make sure that on the the black i have enough so i can staple the white onto the wood so i did make the the black spandex you can see it's kind of overlapping about an inch or so maybe two inches, I don't know, from in different parts, but there's enough space for me to staple the white spandex now onto the wood itself. Here's the white, I forgot to, to do the very, very first part of that, but basically doing the same thing, just stapling across here. Um, you can see on the, on the side for a second, I put actually put a clamp to hold the corner. I wanted to make sure that the corner was stretched when I put in my first little bit. And here I'm just trying to figure out a way to uh, to do the same exact thing. And so I'm, I'm just, I, I kind of pulled taunt those, the spandex underneath and then just working it around. I mean, this, this, this footage here is probably about, probably like an hour and a half <laughs> of maybe an hour. I took my time to do it. Um, but it actually was, was quite a bit of time to, to staple these, but no big deal. I'm cutting out a lot of footage. You can see here the corners. I'm just, it's not perfect, but you know, I don't care about the back. I really just care about the front. Um, and it, it, it ended up really stretching well. I was anticipating having some areas that were kind of, uh, you know, you can, had a wrinkle or had a, it didn't stretch quite right. You can see, this is my first go at it. The only spot that's poking through is right there on the bottom left where the the uh, couch was, was poking through, but it is it is perfect. These are also some things I got um, along there's some sort of hurricane tie type thing. And I basically just uh, made sure not, I put a little stop on there, made sure not to drill through to the spandex on that, that post there. But I just wanted to put this on here to attach it to the ceiling. Um, I wanted to figure out a way to to do it where I wasn't drilling into the wood and I'm watching some Stargate. So I measured the the center of the screen here 
uh, you can see where that, that green little spot there on the wall is. That's the center. And then from that, I measured how far those brackets were from the center of the screen. And then I measured that, you know, got that and put that on the wall. So the brackets are gonna hang exactly down from these wooden things that I'm attaching to the ceiling in order to, to uh, to determine what distance I'm gonna put. So I didn't exactly know how far I wanted to put it back. So what I did is I got these cargo straps and put those eye hooks on the wood that's at that 45 on the, the ceiling. And that would give me basically the options to go back a little bit and I could use the cargo straps to decide how high I wanted it to be. I tried to do as much of this before I even built the screen, but uh, after I, you know, there's always going to be adjustments you make and I didn't want to get locked into something. So this is still kind of part of the beta testing of this. So here I decided exactly where I wanted it to be. I think I'm um, just kind of going back and forth. I ended up going on that third eyelet because I wanted to get it back as far as I can. Here is the felt that I got on Amazon. I think it was 35 or 40 bucks. And you can see right there that it's just felt and it's sticky on one side. So what I did here, and this may not be the best way to do it, but it ended up working. I just used green tape to hold up the felt. I wanted to, to kind of see it before I just stuck it down. And, and then on the right sides and the left sides, I didn't use the green tape. I just, um, just kind of went ahead and stuck it onto the, the edge. You can see there's some green tape at the bottom. Uh, it wasn't strong enough to hold the bottom. And here's a close up of what the felt tape looks like. Uh, it's just fabric right there and then it sticks and it sticks pretty good um, I don't have it on the video but I did end up when I got totally done with the project uh, stapling the felt onto the back um, just so that there's no way it's gonna peel up over time and on the top one I just overlapped it over the sides so here I'm taking off the green tape and now I'm going to, to peel the sticky part peel the tape and actually permanently attach it um, now on this, I just pretty much put it right up to the edge. So if you were to look at the screen from the top or the sides, you'd actually see white. You can kind of see on the, the right side there, there's a, there's a little hair of white there. Here's the thing though, if you're in a viewing angle of the screen, like if you're watching a movie, you're never gonna see the sides there um, because it's just, you're not at an angle to where you're gonna see the sides. So I thought about going back and adding some more felt. I might possibly do that, I don't know. Uh, but right now it's not even a big deal to me. Just inching my way along the bottom, uh, putting the felt on there so that, um, and I'm just trying to butt it up against the bottom so that, uh, that it just looks perfect and even. Here's my son looking at the first uh, viewing of the, uh, of the screen. This is the Guardians of the Galaxies, or two, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. As you can see, it looks awesome. Colors popped, I was really impressed. So hopefully you uh, can see in the video how really good the image quality is with this screen. So hopefully you enjoyed that build of me building this screen and hopefully it inspired you to, I don't know, build one yourself and improve your home theater if your home theater needs it. Uh, I'm Kenneth Russell, I make videos that help, usually help make musicians better musicians but I'm also a home theater enthusiast, so in these, this series of home theater videos, I'm making videos that help make home theater enthusiasts better home theater enthusiasts. Anyway, Kenneth Russell out. Thank you so much for watching this long video. Take care, and I'll see you in another video.